Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Messages of Hope with your I Can Coach, Nina Ganguly. And I am excited to be here with you for session number three in our walkthrough, The Power of Positive Thinking with Norman Vincent Peale. So what have we been talking about so far? We started off in chapter one with, I just wanted to recap for you, believing in yourself and connecting to all the things we talked about 10, 10, 5, 10 steps in believing in yourself. And then we moved on to a peaceful mind generates power. And this week, we're going to be talking about how to have constant energy. Now, how many of you deal with the issue of having constant energy? energy, the same amount of energy that you have con to have consistently over the day to produce the results that you want in your life or to be focused where you want in your life. Listen, I'm one of those people I deal with not having constant energy. I will tell you one thing though, my energy stays constant when I'm in a mode of creation where I am doing exactly what I'm meant to be doing inside of my purpose. I can go, go, go for hours and days and my energy doesn't wane because I'm so aligned with what I'm to be doing and connected to my divine purpose that my energy will stay constant. And when I'm off of alignment, I'm constantly tired, hungry because I'm an emotional eater. And it was funny, I was watching a program today about that, which is a completely different topic, but I thought I would just mention it, the whole hunger thing. I celebrate with I celebrate when I'm hung, when I'm bored, when I'm excited, when it's a celebration. But anyways, these are things though, the way we treat our bodies, the way we treat ourselves, the way we treat our mind and how our mind treats us, I guess, is something that impacts our energy levels. And when you are out to create a wonderful, beautiful life for yourselves, having that state of constant energy is, is one of the keys to just living this beautiful life. And so that is what we're going to talk about today. And many gurus talk about this. And this is Norman Vincent Peale's, uh, you know, advice on this. Tony Robbins talks about state changes, like changing your physical state. I know lots of people like, you know, do the cold showers and the swims and to change the actual physical state, to shock your state into your body, into a different state. And that's a little bit about what we're going to talk today and dive into today. So I'm going to start right at the beginning of this chapter to create a story for you that Norman Vincent Peale is talking about and read about that and then pause and I had a definition up here, which I lost now, um, but uh, there is a word in here that we're going to have to define. So how to have constant energy. So a major league baseball pitcher once pitched a game when the temperature was over 100 degrees. He lost several pounds as a result of the afternoon's exertion. At one stage of the game, his energy sagged. His method for restoring his ebbing strength was unique. He simply repeated a passage from the Old Testament, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they sh shall walk and not faint. That's Isaiah 40, 31. Frank Hiller, the pitcher who had this, who had this experience told me that reciting this verse on the pitcher's mound actually gave him renewal of strength so that he was able to complete the game with energy to spare. Now you've got to take off, you've got to consider, okay, this actual, and I'm going to continue to read, but the actual scene here, there's this guy who's pitched a full game. And you know, those of you who have watched baseball or are baseball fans, you know that it takes something to pitch a full game. And this pitcher pitches in a hundred degrees, a hundred degrees. That is hot. He's losing and expel spending so much energy. But what he did was he connected to a verse in the Bible. It could be something else for you, but this is what we're talking about. Uh, a verse in the Bible that had him actually shift his state in order to continue to play this 
game and I believe he won, right? So there is something to be said about what is going on up in here to change your state of, to change your physical state in order to get through what you need to get through to be powerful. So this is what he said. Um, so the pitcher who had this experience told me that reciting this verse on the pitcher's mound actually gave him a renewal of strength. So he was able to complete the game with energy to spare. He explained the technique by saying, I passed a powerful energy producing thought through my mind. It's the train, you know, it's a little train that's, that could, this, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, moves up and up and up and up the mountain, gets over, and there's no other thought aside from, I think I can, I think I can. And I would say, you know you can, you know you can, you know you can, you know you can, and you will. And that makes such a profound difference. So how we think we feel, so how we think we feel, now, I want you to really get this, how you think you're feeling, okay, has a definite effect on how we actually feel physically. If your mind tells you that you're tired, the body mechanisms, the nerves and the muscles accept that fact. If your mind is intensely interested, you can keep on at that activity indefinitely. I was just sharing that, right? When I'm in a flow, when you're in a flow, you get this when you're in the zone, you know, we talk about, oh, I'm in the zone for whatever it is that, you know, turns us on, makes us happy, moves us forward. When you're in the zone, it's like there's no concept of time. There's no concept of hunger. There's no concept of anything aside from you're so grounded and present in what you're doing, there is nothing but joy coming out at that moment. So if your mind is intensely interested, you can keep on that activity indefinitely. Religion functions through our thoughts. In fact, it is a system of thought discipline. By supplying attitudes of faith to the mind, it can increase energy. It helps you to accomplish prodigious, which means like extra large feats, basically, activity by suggesting that you have ample support and resources of power. Now, this book is written by a clergyman, uh, I think, yes, a clergyman and a man who believes in God and, and, you know, from a Christian perspective. I am a Christian. And so I understand what he's saying from that perspective. But let's engage in a conversation outside of that right? There are many positive affirmations, many quotes, many things out there that you can actually take on and hold on to that can change your state. You know, it's all about context from where are you coming from in this moment? So um, I was just having a conversation with Francia, one of the other contributors to Messages of Hope, and we were discussing, uh, you know, living in your you know, living in your most perfect job and career. And, you know, when you start off and I'll just actually, I'm not going to say when you all start off with my own career de development. When, uh, when I was working in the corporate world, there's this job that I wanted uh, and I wanted to be a supervisor. And I was like, I just wanted to have that particular role. And I didn't know anything about the people I would be supervising, meaning I actually didn't even know about the actual role, what they would super be supervising. I just knew that is what I wanted and that was what I was going to do. And I got it, right? I, I had the, I put the positive thoughts in mind. I did everything I needed to do to get that job. And I loved that job. I could have been there. I was working like day and night and hours and all of these things until it no longer served my purpose until I didn't like it anymore, until it wasn't what I wanted to do, until it wasn't the thing that lit me up. And then waking up, waking up in the morning to go to that job didn't feel the same because I didn't have the same connection. I didn't have the same context for that particular job. And it's all about a mindset. Somebody else would have hated that job right from the get-go. You know, not everybody wants to be in that environment but I loved it until I didn't. <laughs> and that totally impacted 
the way I showed up. And I did everything to try and be like, okay, Nina, you know, this is just bide your time. You're going to move into something else and that's going to, you know, make a difference. But it really didn't. It affected my energy. People saw that it affected my energy. It affected my concentration. It affected so many things. So what can you do in order to keep that level of energy? Number one, the number one thing is you've got to love what you do. Or if you don't love what you do, your why has to be so powerful that what you're doing, the result of what you're doing, whether it's earning money or I'm just going to say earning money because I can't think of anything else right now. But, you know, that is the thing that you can use to propel you to keep that level of energy up. You know, it could be a quote that you use. It could be a Bible verse that makes you keep going and moving. For me, it is a lot of Bible verses, a lot of things that I've read in books, a lot of things that people have contributed to me over, over the years that have said, okay, if I can actually grab onto that, if that works for me, because sometimes it doesn't because you're just not in the right place, but that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> but if you can create that energy, you know, that is where we'll keep your state moving. Just like this gentleman did this picture, he hung on to something that would be like, okay, I know that I've got this, you know, I've got this. He's created that support system through those words for himself to say, I can get through this. I, I don't feel the hundred degrees. I don't feel tired. I don't feel any of these things. And that mind body connection, there are so many studies out there about how your thoughts actually impact your physiology, you know, and that is, I don't have one specific one to share with you, but there are so many, I would say, go on to Google and look at what positive thinking, a positive mindset, having something that will bring you joy in what you're doing is going to make a profound difference for you. And I will say for myself, there is my faith gives me that profound energy to get through those moments where you might actually have that thought of, I don't know if I can do this. But when you think about it, you know, you think about the tribe that you create around yourself. So I'm sure that's something that Norman Vincent Peale will talk about later in the book, but you know, it's having the people around you who are going to keep you connected to that context that you're building. Or maybe sometimes, you know, when you go on that downturn, somebody saying, Hey, maybe you need to look, have a look at his, is this still what you want? Is this still what you want so that you can move yourself out of what could be something negative and turn it into a positive by looking and seeing, you know, are those tactics still working for you in this area? And if they're not, then it's an opportunity to look at something else. The power of positive thinking makes a profound difference for so many people. You know, it's, it's like, I can't say it enough. And I hope that you understand that it's not all about, like I said before, rose colored glasses and, you know, flowers and sunshine. It's really about looking for the optimism in the moment, you know, the silver lining to the cloud, looking for that place where you can say, okay, this is happening. It could be, you know, something dire. This is happening and I'm still alive. This is happening and I still have a beautiful family. This is happening, I still have a roof over my head. And connecting to those things will make the most profound difference for you. And that is what I'm gonna leave you with today. I'm gonna to leave you with, look to see what your driving force is to have you move forward in your life. Write it down, get really clear for yourself. Why do you do what you do? What? Why does this thing that you do or who you're being bring you so much joy? And that is what I'm going to leave for you today. And if you like what I'm saying, if you like what any of us are saying, please do like, comment, share, and subscribe below on one of these sides over here, whichever where it is. Please take that time to do so. And remember, the power of creating an I can life starts here with your mindset. Bye for now.